Hello, and welcome to AS Rocketry. After keeping track of other people's PID-based thrust vector control systems for a while, I wondered whether artificial intelligence could be used instead, and since I needed something to do, I gave it a try. This video documents my development process of designing and building a completely self-training neural network-based thrust vector control system. Before we get started, just a quick heads up, this is actually my first real video, so uh, welcome to the channel. This project's been a few years in the making. If you end up enjoying it, a like would be awesome. Also, a big thanks to EasyEDA for giving me a discount on some of the PCBs for this project. Over the course of this project, I've made two iterations of the rocket. This blue one is the first attempt. It used terrible PLA parts from my not fit for purpose printer and a basic Arduino nanobase flight computer. This was the most basic circuit I could come up with and I was able to easily design and have my PCBs manufactured with Easy EDA and JLC PCB within only a couple of weeks, costing only a few quid, even including shipping from China. For this rocket, I used a typical PID controller and did about seven hold down tests, where I learned a lot about what was necessary to make a rocket stable. The two main reasons for failure in these tests were bad power regulation on my flight computer, causing brownouts. After soldering a few random capacitors on, it was able to just about drive the two servos reliably enough, and bad PID gain values being effectively chosen at random, which was not the best idea. I decided to develop a simple one-axis physics simulation for my rockets in Python. From this, I was able to test different PID values to find ones that worked. This still took some try never to get right, but eventually, success. This made my rocket very stable for the first and last time, as on this test, I had a catastrophic motor explosion, conveniently putting this rocket into retirement. Using everything I learned from my first iteration, I was able to create this. While it doesn't look like I changed much, basically everything other than the body tube was upgraded. Thanks to an engineering grant I was awarded by a local company I was able to justify making this substantially more advanced flight computer, StarNav, without ever having had an electronics class. I designed this using EasyEDA's free standard version. I could go into a lot of detail about this board, but since I don't want the video to stretch too long, here's a summary of the details. It has the ability to drive up to six servos simultaneously, enabling the possibility for four-fin control, as well as servo-based parachute deployment. 3 channel pyrotechnics pulling straight from the 7.4 volt 3S LiPo running through high current MOSFETs. An ESP32 S3 dual core processor with Wi Fi and Bluetooth for communication. An MPU6050 accelerometer and gyroscope. Some random pressure sensors that I wouldn't recommend using. A buzzer and two RGB NeoPixels. The board can also be expanded to use a standard 433 MHz LoRa as well as GPS. However, this is not needed for this project, as all communications can be done over Bluetooth directly to my phone. Using EasyEDA's one-click order functionality through their partner service, JLC PCB, I ordered five of these boards to be manufactured and assembled on one side, costing about $127 before the discount I was given. I decided not to have them sold at a few components, as this allowed it to be a one-sided PCB assembly, significantly reducing the cost. I then soldered the remaining few components on the other side with a soldering iron. Again, a huge thank you to EasyEDA for the discount they provided. This video would not have been possible without it. Link in the description. As far as mechanical changes go, the biggest one was getting a new 3D printer so I could print extremely rigid and impact resistant high temperature carbon fiber filaments. The need for this made the choice of printer obvious for me. The Bamboo Labs P1S with a hardened steel extruder gear and 0.6mm nozzle upgrade, which was relatively simple to install. I printed a slightly modified version of my 18mm motor mount from the first rocket out of PET CF, which removed almost all of the slot. However, I decided to keep most of the other parts in PLA to save costs. None of these have broken yet, but I may reprint them for better impact resistance out of PET G CF, which I have just ordered. So, as I said in the intro, I've developed a fully self-training AI to replace the PID system found in everyone else's thrust vectoring rockets. To do this, I'm using a neuroevolutionary fixed topology network 
trained to the exact specifications of the rocket, right before flight, and then sent to Starnav over Bluetooth. This works by having a neural network with three inputs, thrust, angle, and angular velocity. These three inputs are fed through the network, using the assigned weights and biases for each neuron, until it reaches the single output neuron. This is scaled, and then used for the motor angle for this axis. As with most PID implementations, I'm running this on isolated axes, so only one network needs to be trained, which can then be reused for both. To train the networks, I initialized 1000 of them with random weights and biases, and ran them through the simulation I previously created in Python. Each network is assigned a score based on the average angular error, as well as jerk in the motor. This helps to smooth out the motion. The networks are sorted by their scores, and the next generation is formed from some of the best of the previous, selected randomly, as well as randomly mutated copies of them. Over many generations, the networks evolve to get higher and higher scores, until they can perfectly stabilize the rocket. Here's a look around the current version of the app I've developed. First, there's the configuration section, with an advanced settings page to change the structure of the fixed topology network, as well as a configuration manager allowing for storage of multiple configurations. By tapping on a configuration, you can open the detailed editor, where physics and simulation settings can be changed. There's also a button to edit the motor configuration, which pulls motor data from thrustcurve.org. In the main simulations section, there's two graphs. The first shows the training progress of the network. The second shows the rocket versus motor angle for the best network of the current generation. When training is paused, there's a third section which shows a real-time animation of the data shown in the above graph. Finally, there's a launch section of the app. Once connected to the rocket over Bluetooth, this allows the best currently trained network to be sent to the rocket. As with the first rocket, I started with some hold down tests, except this time, thanks to the lessons I learned, everything worked perfectly immediately. I soon went on to actual launches, of which I've done two successfully so far. One in extreme winds, being more stable than some of the passively stable rockets launched that day. Thank you for making it this far, and if you've got any questions, feel free to comment. And if you like the video, like it. And if you want to see what I've got coming, AI landing? Subscribe!